good morning the day after and I recommend you get it the day of it makes this process a lot easier but due to uh, well I wouldn't say popular demand but demand nonetheless people want to see how I go about cleaning my radiator and keep the bike from overheating so we're gonna take you through it right now pretty basic I've always kind of felt silly uh, even thinking about doing a video about it because it's really pretty basic maintenance right you need to just get in there and wash it but um, we have a particular way I go about it let's get the bike out further ado we're gonna give her a full wash and I have my gear so we gonna get you guys in on it now we did do some hydroplaning obviously you guys saw that Down, so that's what we're gonna do. Knock off the rest of what's here, and then we'll get to the radiator. Actually, we'll probably do the radiator first. fire that up too early give her a little soak down knock some of this loose crap off so I'm not wearing so much we'll pull that front grill now unfortunately uh, one thing I will say about the renegades I ride I always put the uh, pre-screen on them which is in there and it makes it a little more difficult to clean your radiator from the front side but we always focus on the rear and pushing it out the same way that it comes in so that's rule one right before you clean from the front to the back make sure you've knocked out all the from the back to the front okay what do we need a bucket of soap get this thing soaked down get that hose rolled out now something else I always use is the uh, and it seems to make a huge difference obviously because it's a tight tight spot to get in there and even try to clean your radiator from the back side so one of my secret weapons is this end on the garden hose the old fire style right you can get a wide band actually it usually goes wider than that I'm due for a new one I think the o-rings yeah crapping out on me but something that spreads out pretty good that can adjust and is obviously easy to get into small places like even this actually adds a hindrance should uh, remove that really but First things first, I come at this strip with a open, so it's not fanned out, straight power. And I'll get these outer fins, they're a bit larger on the radiators. And I find if you pound straight in directly here, you'll see that it comes out this line of fins. Um, and when you get that clean, then I'll start moving inward. And think of the fan as basically uh, divided into four pies. You have these little triangles to work with. They're very hard to get into. That's why having something that can fan out in a tight area uh, provides uh, adequate flow and uh, yeah so fan it out and you can usually rotate around in each of the triangles from the back side I come over the a-arm through here and I can get that lower one and I think I use the same angle and then bend the hose up maybe the top head cam See, and that's about the fan width right there in which I'll work the back triangle from just like this and if I keep my eyes in here, hopefully you guys can see what I'm saying, and pull this out, I can usually spot the water right here coming out, how dirty it is, and how long it takes to come out clean and run clean. 
and that's what I'll do. I'll continue working this spot until I see the backside, the water, as you can see there. I don't know if you can, but they're clean, right? We got a little bit of dirty there. I'll just hold it, vibrate it around a little bit. I'm trying not to rub on the back side of the radiator with the pins because this has a metal end on it and that's just aluminum. It'll fold those pins over really easily. So just go easy at it. And that's the bottom section. You can see it's actually not bad. It's coming out pretty clean. It's a lot easier when I have two hands because I can pull out on this, this plastic here and get a better view, right? See how much movement I can get and see a lot more visibility, right? I'll open it up like that and run this right up the line until I can start seeing it come out the front right there. And clean those other ones. Now a garden hose doesn't give enough pressure to warp those fins in there. Whereas a pressure washer does, if you hit your radiator with a pressure washer, you're going to fold all the fins right over. And then you're not going to get any airflow at all. That's actually not too bad. I can see it's all pretty well coming out clean water. Oh, it's a little dirty. No, nope, never mind. Yeah, I see some junk in there. So I'll go up and down that a few times, holding the hose right up to the crevice, try to get it on a 45. And it's coming out pretty clean. So from there, I'll go back inside and fan this thing out with a good pressure like that. And now we're gonna try to get up into the top one, which I usually use this route right here. But I do need two hands to rotate around the whole thing properly. We're not in it. There we are. Hear that fan blade going? We're back at the bottom one there, boys. Get up in here and I'll push her out, but I gotta use my other hand to be thorough about it and check every bit of it. Top is never usually near as bad as the bottom, obviously, because it's higher off the ground, right? So again, the renegade's pretty powerful, the can amps in general, to the point where I mean most holes, if you attack them aggressive enough, the front end's gonna be up in the air and not really dragging through it. But once you come down into her, you can bet your ass these big old lugs are filling every inch underneath the bike. So you're gonna get some back in there at. That's pretty good. Our radiators are really not that bad. So we're gonna come around and do the exact same process on the other side. You can see how much we're pushing out here. We usually get stuck up against the screen. But we don't want to push that back in yet. We still got more to clean her off the rad too, so we need to go back into that lower section. It's running out nice and clean. That's what I want to see. I think most of that is just grass that's kind of stuck in there. I'll show you how I get that out of there as well. You know, just blast. It'll pull this out and blast on the inside of the screen, the, the protective screen, on an angle. And we usually toss things out the side, go to the other side, come back this way and do the same, same process. But it uh, usually works. Well, it has worked. I haven't had a problem with it yet. You can actually blast this line right from back here if you know what you're doing. Now it runs right out of those two fins on the side. And this looks like it's got a little bit of clogging up at the top. Oh, no, there we go. Hopefully you guys are catching all that. Probably not. All right. Shorten that up, let's get in there. On this side, we gotta come over the A-arm and underneath the uh, radiator hose. And I can actually see the end of it from here, between the uh, the fan shroud and the radiator. Pretty good view on the radiator there. You can also see it coming out the front. Uh, hopefully you guys are getting that. I'll do a little pan up and down, see if we can manipulate it enough. And you're going to move that around as best you can. Make your way up. Water is coming out pretty good. We do have a little bit of grass build up. You can see that. Yeah, 
just keep working it, it will come out. All in all, this radiator is still pretty clean. Like I said, uh, we went through some pretty crappy stuff yesterday, but I was able to keep the front end up. Everything was pretty thick and soupy, so if you can get the front up, the belly stays up. When your stock gets all under you, usually. It's not too bad. Pretty happy with that. Like I say, when it's plugged, you'll see it run dirty for a while. If you get back to the white water, you know you're good. Little white caps. You can see them in there. And as expected, top of our radiator is even better. Yeah, top of her's in better shape for sure. That's about it, boys. That's actually looking pretty good. So now I just need to get that radiator somewhat clean. So I'll take it, put it on blast, and come sideways at that screen. Let's see if we can get some of that out of there. This stuff just rolls off from the outside. You can usually push it aside, and pull it right off with your hands. You come across it from this side. And you can knock it off from the front. We know it's all clean, now we just have to get the debris out from in between. Now because I do this on a regular basis and keep it really good and clean, I know right now that this radiator is pretty well good to go. She's not going to be a problem on my next run. Um, and again, uh, if you let it go and it gets hard, it'll it'll really basically turn to almost a concrete. It gets so hard. Are you best to just pull the radiator? Probably. Um, I have gotten in some situations where I wasn't able to clean the bike till the next morning and we were coming out of the ATV park, really thick clay and uh, sitting in it. And I've been up against the concrete wall. I have been able to get it back in working order without pulling pulling the radiator before but it took a long time it took three different uh, I think I went at it in three different different sessions that lasted you know well over an hour so um, yeah it was a long time trying to soften it first right and then being able to force it out the way it came before like I said resorting to pushing from the front to the back and at this point this radiator is pretty clean you could if you wanted to however I never really do I don't really flush from the front to the back but you can come back at the end Yeah, just stuff like that, but pretty well ready to rock on cleaning the bike now. This one's good to go. Simple shit, but you guys wanted to know my process, that's it, right? Uh, that spray soap is, is really handy. Power power soap, or whatever they call them, power bottles. Um, to help loosen it as well, if you'd like. Which we've done soap as well. All right, you're about ready for a scrub down almost. You get in there real bad, you gotta pull your plastics, side plastics and everything, this isn't real bad. That's where the water play comes in good because it'll actually rinse out the interior of the bike really well. I pressure wash time to time, quite a bit here and there to knock it off, but I always finish by hand cleaning because it just doesn't, doesn't get everything. It's not like your hands can. And that's what it takes to get rid of the smears and the smuts. It's getting your hands on everything. As well as, it's good maintenance, right? You find your shaft bolts loose or, or a tie rod ends loose or anything. Once you get your hands on every inch of the bike, you tend to find the maintenance before it gets you. Before it breaks you down on the trail. And it's always usually something quick and easy, you know? Throw some Loctite in that area and then uh, don't look back, right? Check it a couple times after, make sure it's good and it's no longer a weak point. Move on to the next. 
just good maintenance. Get your hands on it. That's how I do it. All right, now we're gonna start section by section, start cleaning this thing up. vapor inside the box. These are high maintenance box. They're really nice. But I mean mist. I mean you're giving her. You're drawing in mist, you're drawing in dust when you're on the trail, so that's a forever keep cleaning type of thing, right? It is really cool. However, I think it's worth it. It looks awesome and uh, really shows off the clutches which I love. Nothing but love for the old STMs. Yeah, they'll pop it again. We gotta replace the bolts anyways it's missing but More suction, the rear and the exhaust, and we're pretty well there. Looking good. And then the wheels, and under the fenders, and the suspension. We're not almost there. We got a ways to go. Who are we fooling? Just trying to give ourselves motivation to finish the job. That's all. That's it. Front to back, head to toe. She's clean. Yeah, pretty well detailed. She's all cleaned up. Appreciate you guys joining us. Next time. Cheers.